Welcome back guys, my name is Sayed and in this class we are going to start the chapter 2 and it's about the software. Let's begin the class. First of all, what is a software? The program that run on a computer are called the software. That is a simple de definition of a software. Program are instructions that are executed by the computer processor, which also gives instruction to the rest of the computer. Some computer can only run one program at a time, while other can run multiple programs simultaneously. Uh, and there are two types of uh, software and uh, number one is called the system software and number two is called the application software in this chapter we are going to discuss the both uh, system softwares and the application softwares let's start with the system software first introduction to the system software what is a system software program that are designed to maintain or operate computer system are known as the system software example could be microsoft windows linux and mac os these are the example of system softwares so now let's discuss the utility software a utility software is one form of a system software which carries out configuration and maintenance tasks. The example of a utility software include the, the system cleaner, defragmentation utility, antivirus, and backup software. Okay. Now let's discuss the first type of utility software, which is called the backup utilities. Backup utilities create a copy of files and program. The basic purpose of the backup utilities is to create the copies. Backup can be set to run automatically, usually at the time when the system is not in use, or can be started by the user at any time. That's all about the backup utilities. Now let's talk about the defragmentation utilities. Before we start the defragmentation, let's first discuss what is the fragmentation. When you save a file on your computer, it is broken up into small pieces and stored on the hard drive. Sometimes these pieces are stored all over the hard drive, not in one place. This is called the fragmentation. When you save a file on a computer, it is broken down into small pieces and those pieces are stored on the hard disk. Usually they are stored in the different places of the hard drive. When a file is fragmented, the read-write head has to move around more to find all the pieces of the file. When, when the file is not in one place, so read-write have to move around to find the pieces of the file. This takes extra time, which can slow down the process of loading the file. That is why this thing can make your computer slow. Fragmentation can make it slower for your computer to find the pieces of a file and open it. That is all about the fragmentation. Here you can see one example. We have two bookshelves. Okay, On the first bookshelf, the books are stored in the random order. Okay, so if I ask you to go and find some book, of course, you need some time to find the book. But second shelf, books are stored in order. So if I now ask you to go and find some book from the second shelf, it's easier for you to go and find the book. Similarly, if the data is stored on the hard disk in a random order, read right head need to find that data and it takes time. Now let's discuss what is the defragmentation utility. This defragmentation utilities can help your computer run faster. And they do this by reordering the data fragments on your hard drive so they are placed as close together as possible. The fragmentation utilities are usually set to run automatically, but they can also be started by the user. The user cannot also start those utilities by themselves, but usually they are set to run automatically. Here you can see uh, one example. We have a hard disk and we have four files. One is PPT, second one is song, then we have one report and one picture. When you save those files, data is stored on the hard drive in a random order. For example, yellow is PPT, right? Some part of the PPT files are sa saved on this location. Some is stored in this location. Some part are stored on uh, that location. They are not in one place. When you try to open this PPT, read right head, this part, the, the read right head need to find those pieces of the file and it takes time for the read right head to find and load that file. If you run the defragmentation utility, so as you can see, all the pieces are now in one place. For example, PPT is in one place. Similarly, picture is in one place. Report is in one place and song is in one place. So it's very easy for the read and write head to find and open that file. That's all about the defragmentation utility. Next type of utility software is called the compression. Compression utilities reduce the original size of a file or set of files. If you want to reduce the size of a file, you use the compression utility. Instead of saving every repeated occurrence of a data, just the initial instance is saved along with how often it is repeated. That's how the compression utility works. Uh, for example, in the figure, there were eight instances of A, eight instances of B, six instances of C, and two instances of D in the original file. Let, let's say this is the original file and this data is inside this file. How we can compress this file to save some storage? Here you can see, we can use the run length encoding. This is one of the compression methods. So this data can be compressed to be stored as A8, B8, C6, and D, which reduce the amount of the storage needed. Here you can see, we can store A8 as A8. Okay, similarly, we can make B8 we can make the C8 and we can make the B2. That's how we can reduce the file size and save it. 
Okay, now let's discuss what is the decompression. Compressed file is not usually readable by the original application. For example, if you have a PPT and you compress that PPT, it will turn into a zip file, right? So you cannot open the zip file inside the PowerPoint. Compression utilities can also decompress or extract data from the compressed file so that the original application can read. If you want to open that PPT inside the PowerPoint, you need to first decompress that file. Then you can open that PPT inside Microsoft PowerPoint. We need to decompress that file to get our data. Now, this is a job of decompression utility to decompress a compressed file. Next utility is called the formatting utility. Disk formatting is a process of preparing a storage medium such as a hard disk drive or the USB flash drive for its first use. And formatting disk will erase all the data on the disk. Make sure you back up any important files before you start. When you format up the disk or a drive, it removes all the data from that drive. Disk fragmentation utilities make it easy for the user to choose the file system, file unit size, and the disk name. With the help of the disk fragmentation utilities, you can also do those things. And most importantly, formatting utilities make sure that the user really wants to format the disk before they start. When you click on the format utility, it gives you a warning and tells you that if you format this drive, it will erase all the data. But if you really want to format, you need to select yes. If you accidentally press the format button, then you need to say no. Here is an exam question. We need to match the correct answer. First is compression. What is compression? Compression is used to reduce the file size. Number three is the correct answer. Next one is a backup. So what is the correct answer? Uh, backup create the copies of a file. Okay. This is the backup. Next one is the anti-malware. So anti-malware is protected from the viruses. These are the answers of those questions. Next question. Which one of these is the type of software used to compress a file? We have four options. A. Backup. B. Utility. C. Security. And D. Network. The correct answer is B. Utility. Okay, now let's discuss about the operating systems. What is an operating system? The operating system or OS allows users to control and manage the computer hardware. Computer is made up of a hardware, right? We have different hardware. For example, we have hard disk, we have processor, we have RAM, we have input and output devices, for example, mouse, keyboard, and those things. Operating system job is to allow the user to control those hardware. Let's talk about the different types of operating systems. So first type of operating system is called the single user operating system. A single user operating system only support a single user and cannot customize the user's interface for different users. This is one thing about the single user interface. Next thing, they are often found in the household appliance. You can find those things on the household appliance like the microwave or washing machine. And also you can find them on this type of device. Next type of operating system is called the network operating system. Network operating system has additional functionality, including the first functionality is sending requests to a server when the user logs in with their username and the password. This is the first responsibility as you can see. Send and receive the response when you try to log into a server. Next is the separating user account and ensuring the user cannot access each other's files. If your files are stored in one server, this is the responsibility of network operating system to separate the files of each user. And no one can access each other's files. Providing access to the network storage and shared resources such as network printers. This is also the responsibility of the network operating system. It can provide access to the shared resources like if you have one printer right, in your office. Manage the access to that printer. So here you can see we have two users, Lisa and Ellen, and their files are stored on the server. This is server, okay? For example, this is Lisa's PDF and this is Ellen's PPT. Okay, if Lisa's try to access her PDF file, the server will give access to Lisa. Yeah, this PDF belongs to Lisa. But if Ellen try to access Lisa's PDF, okay, send the Lisa's PDF, the server will respond no because this PDF belongs to Lisa, not to Ellen. Similarly, if Lisa try to access Ellen PPT, it won't be possible because the server will not give access to Lisa's computer. This PPT belongs to Ellen. Okay, so now let's discuss about the responsibilities of the operating system. There are four major responsibilities of an operating system. Number one is memory management. Number two is the resource management. Number three is security. And the last one is print spooling. Now let's discuss each responsibility in detail. The first responsibility is the memory management. So the operating system allocates the required amount of memory or RAM to one or more applications. When you run an application, it's loaded into the RAM. This is the operating system responsibility to allocate the required amount of memory to that program. When an application no longer requires the memory, the operating system makes it available for the other application to use. For example, this is your RAM and you are working on the three softwares. You have a Google Chrome, Microsoft Word, and VLC Player. If you close one of those applications, operating system will allocate the memory to the next program. Okay? That's how it works. So for example, if you close the, this one, Microsoft Word, then operating system will move it from the memory and allocate this memory to the next program. That's how it works. Okay, next responsibility is called the resource management. What is resource management? The operating system makes sure that applications have access to the system resources they need. And system resources include the CPU, memory, and other hardware devices such as printers. If a resource is already in use, the operating system will put the request in a queue. Here you can see, for example, if you are on an online meeting, okay, now Zoom app, and then you suddenly receive a video call from your friend. And if you try to click on the video call button to receive that call, your computer will not let you to use the camera because your camera is already used by this application. 
you have to wait you have to close this application and then you can use or maybe you can receive the call after the meeting when the camera is not in use this is also the responsibility of operating system for some resources such as the printer the operating system can tell the user when the resource become available next feature is called the security feature authentication allow users to provide secure access to computer storage and hardware using the username password biometric scanning or, or the personal access card this is also a responsibility of the system to give the user access using the, those different type of authentication method but password username and by maybe your fingerprint or the face id Operating system can provide software firewall to authorize or prevent network data from remotely access a service or application. This is also a responsibility of operating system. The last responsibility of operating system is called the print spooling. During the large print job, the computer will have the pages ready for the printer faster than the printer can produce. For example, if you want to print 20 pages, your computer can make those pages ready for the print maybe in a few seconds. Printer maybe need one minute to print those pages we can say that the printer speed is slow and our computer speed is faster right the operating system keep each page in a queue ready for printing this process is called the print spooling now we're done with the responsibilities of operating system next we talk about the application software so now let's start the application first of all what is application software software applications or app allow users to produce a digital product such as a presentation or image perform specific tasks not related to the operating system this is the basic definition of application software Apps are the software program that can be downloaded from the internet or installed from the storage material activity. You can install the apps from the internet or can download them from some website or maybe you can use the DVDs to install those apps. For example, if you have a game, game is also a software, right? So usually games are available on the DVD disc. Some devices like the smartphone and tablet have app stores where you can find and download the apps. Some devices, for example, your iPhone. Your iPhone have apps or when you want to download some app, you can go to the app store, write the name of that app and then install the app from the app store. Why we need the App Store? Because App Store makes sure that the software that you're trying to install does not contain any harmful code. Harmful code means any code that could steal your personal information. The first type of application software called the productivity software. What are the productivity software? Office productivity software is an application that can carry out the work-related requests and often available as an application suite. The, the application suite is a collection of application software that share the same look and user interface. Often they share data and share some functionality. That's all about the, the application suite. The example of our application suite is Microsoft Office. For example, we have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, Outlook. These are the all software by the same company, Microsoft, and they have the same user interface and mostly their functionality is usually the same. Okay, now let's talk about the word processing software. Word processing software that users create documents that mostly include Word, but also some images. They can also include tables, hyperlinks, quotations, simple drawings, shapes, and charts. An example of word processing software is WPS or Microsoft Word. Why we need the word processing software? Word processing are good the choice of application for creating letters, essay, report, books. For example, if you want to create those things, you need the word processing software. For example, your textbook were written using the word processing software. Now let's talk about the, some features of the word processing software. The first feature is called the collaboration feature. Word processing application allow people to work together on a document. Uh, feedback this is the second feature comments can be added to the text that other can understand the writer's intention and give the feedback. next feature is the track changes the software can also track any changes made to the document giving other the option to accept or reject those changes okay and next feature is allow the user to change the fonts and provide different layouts views to allow user to position text and images on the page and the last and very powerful feature is called the spelling and grammar checking spelling and grammar checking tools identify errors in the text as the user types. Okay, these are the all features of the word processing software. Next type of application software is called the desktop publishing software or DTP. DTP software has many similar features to, to those in the word processing software. Features in word processing software and DTP, they are same. The basic purpose of both of these software is to write the text, okay, create a document. The main difference is the way in which software allows user to work with complicated page layout. The, the main difference is the word processing software like Microsoft Word don't allow you to create a complicated layout but the desktop publishing app allows you to create complicated layout of the page. Yeah. For example, if you see your book, your book have different sections, right? You have different boxes, different sections. To do those things, you need the desktop publishing app. An example of DTP software is Adobe InDesign. This is one of the DTP. Next application software is called the spreadsheet. Spreadsheet applications are used to do the calculation. The basic purpose of those applications to do the calculation on the data. User can use and create formulas and functions to perform automatic calculation on values that can be entered and changed later. These features allow spreadsheet to be used to model financial scenarios and answer what type of questions. Questions such as what would be the cost per ticket be 
if I change the maximum number of staff required to my event. The example of those software are Microsoft Excel and Numbers. Okay, the next type of application software is called the database software. What is database? Database management system or DBMS are used to enter, edit, and search data. That is the basic function of the database software. Some system can also produce reports that dynamically display real-time changes to the data as it updates. And the longer, now let's talk about the features of the database software, data entry form so that user can input data. This is the first feature. Next feature is the query editor so that the user can select all data that meets a certain criteria. And the last feature is report builders so that user can display data in a more readable format. An example of the DBMS is Oracle MySQL. Next type of application software is called the web authoring software. What is a web authoring software? Web authoring software lets user create web pages that include text and images. The pages are output as hypertext markup language. HTML is read by the browser software such as Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge. Web browser translates the HTML pages that people can see and read. And the web pages can be linked together to create a website for the people who view on intranet or on a web server on the internet. That's all about the web uh, authoring software. Why we need the web authoring software? Some people uh, prefer to create customized web pages by writing the HTML. Some tools allow users to produce complex websites with little or no HTML coding experience. These programs are sometimes uh, termed as what you see is what you get editor because the published pages look remarkably similar to the pages the user update in the online editing application. That's all about the web authoring software. Now let's discuss the next type of application software, which is image editing software. What are image editing software? Image editing application let users create and change bitmap images such as a digital a photograph or vector graphics such as drawing or logos. What is a bitmap? Bitmap, a computer image that is stored or printed as an arrangement of bits. What is a vector graphic? Vector graphic, a graphical image made up of points and lines. Now, first, let's discuss the graphic editors. Graphic editing application allows users to create or edit vector graphics. An example of graphic editing software is Adobe. Now, let's discuss the features of the graphic editors. The first feature is the vectorizing image that is converting or tracing bitmap graphic to a vector graphic. And second feature is the layers. And this is having the ability to place some graphics on top of others. Next feature is adding text, adding or drawing shapes and lines, resizing, aligning or moving the shapes and lines, altering the color of the shape, lines and field areas. That's the second feature. Now let's talk about the photo editors. These applications allow users to edit and enhance the digital photographs and images. An example is GNU image manipulation program like Jim or GIMP. And second one is most popular, Photoshop. Now let's talk about the features of the photo editor. The first feature is the red eye removal. Second feature is the blurring images, okay? The next one is the resizing the images and cropping images. We have applying different types of filter and adjusting the brightness and the contrast and altering the sharpness. And the last feature is distortion effect. Now let's talk about the sound editing softwares. What are sound editing software? Sound editing software allows users to edit audio files or to join together different audio files in order to create multi-track music or soundtrack for a video. This is the basic job of sound editing software. An example of sound editing software is Audacity and Adobe Audition. Now let's discuss the features of the sound editing softwares. Okay. First feature is cut and join audio clips, mute and solo for some audio track, alter the volume levels of individual tracks, change the tempo. Next we have the Frequency equalization, changing the level of high and low pitch frequency and add effects like reverberate. Next one is apply audio processing such as reverse noise reduction, normalization, fade the volume in that it gets louder or out so that it gets quieter. Next type of application software is presentation software. What are the presentation software? Presentation software allows users to create engaging multimedia content including images, text, animation, and videos. This content can be placed on slides or pathways that are used to illustrate uh, and support the spoken content of a talk given to an audience. So an example of the presentation software is Microsoft PowerPoint and Prezi. Now let's talk about the features of the presentation software. A sum application allows users to practice timing and add narration that automatically plays back on the appropriate slides. These slides can be set advanced automatically after a set period of time or on command from the presenter. Notes can be added to the presentation to remind and prompt the presenter to speak about the specific point during the presentation.
Next type of application software, we call them the control application. What are the control application? Control application are used to make something happen in the physical environment. This type of software is often used to automate the movement of control devices or equators such as motors. Control software is often used in engineering vehicles and building the control system. However, a developing group of control application is in the area of some automated system where devices can be monitored and controlled using a smartphone app. Next type of application software is called the project management. What is a project management software? A project management app assists plan and track individual tasks in a project so the project managers can make most efficient use of available resources. Some tasks cannot be started until the previous task is completed or partially completed. So it is important for a project manager to see which tasks are dependent on other. When all these dependent tasks are put into a timetable, it's easy for the project manager to see the critical path. These applications can also be used to set the milestones. So now let's talk about some features of the project management software. The project management application can be used to allocate tasks to individual people or group of people. They often provide the option for individual or groups of people to be allocated more than one task. Some project management applications also provide tools for tracking the cost and arranging for the resources to be delivered on time. Next type of application software is called the communication software. Okay. What are communication software? Communication software provide remote access to system and allow users to connect people using the internet. Uh, it can be used to send files and messages as text, images, audios, and videos. Next type of application software is called the web browsers. The web browser allows users to view pages and websites created in web authoring software and hosted on servers that are connected to the internet. These servers may be in another country. Different browser have different features and permittabilities with file types used on the World Wide Web. A browser also now uses to access the system that use the internet but are not on the World Wide Web, such as the file transfer protocol server. Next up of application software, we have the email. Or email can be sent and received by software installed on a computer. This locally installed software acts as a client to an email server. Also, it often stores or uses a database of contact, which is sometimes available as another application. As well as locally installed application users can access email through webmail software which they read through a web browser. Webmail is an example of web application that is hosted on a web server and accessed on internet connection. Here are some features of the email software. Some webmail applications allow users to store emails offline for access when they do not have an internet connection. Email applications often provide features such as a label to help organize mails and the filters. Next, we have the social media app or social media software. Social media can be accessed through a web browser or by using locally installed apps. Some apps provide access to multi social media accounts. Apps developer create apps that people can download and install on their digital devices. We have the Facebook, TikTok, and Weibo. These are the examples of social media applications. Now let's discuss the SMS and MMS. Mas SMS stands for the Short Messaging Service app. SMS app available on phone. They allow users to send up to 160 character per message using the mobile phone network. No internet, no internet is needed. Multimedia Messaging Service or MMS application extend the capability of M SMS. MMS can deliver more than 160 character per message and can include video, animation, images, and audio. Like SMS, they are sent using the mobile phone network and do not require an internet connection. Next one is the instant messaging application. Instant messaging application are very similar to the MMS application, but they require a connection to the internet. They can allow users to see when other user is typing and users can also prevent others from seeing when they are typing. Messages sent via the instant messaging application can include location data. Now let's discuss about the software licensing. The first question is, what is software licensing? Software license is a legal agreement that gave a user the right to install and use the software. That is the basic definition of software license. There are many types of software license and the details of the software licensing are complicated. To make things easier to understand, you can think about two types of software license that are available. Number one, we have the free or the open source. And number two, we have the proprietary license. These are the two types of license and we are going to discuss these two. Let's first discuss the free software. What is a free software? Free software license lets you study, modify, copy, and distribute the software. That is the basic definition of the free software. You can decide if you want to charge for a copy of the software or give it away for free. 
free software can be made available for a fee or free of charge. Uh, the word free in the free software means you have the freedom to use the software however you want, not that it is always free to download. Now let's talk about the open source software. Open source software license make the source code available to the user so that they can modify how the software work or distribute the modified or unmodified software. So that, that is the basic definition of open source software. We can see the example of open source software is the VLC, Google Chrome is an open source, uh, Firefox is also an open source and LibreOffice is also an open source software. Now let's talk about the proprietary software. Proprietary software is software that is owned by a company or individual. For example, you can think of the Microsoft Word that is owned by Microsoft. This type of software, they are called the proprietary software. The owner of the software can decide if it is free or if you have to pay for it. That is decided by the company or the owner. If the software is free, it is called the freeware. If a software belongs to a company and it is free, so that is mean that is a freeware. Proprietary software usually does not let you see or change the code that makes the software work. So you cannot see the code of proprietary software because it is closed source. If the software is open source, you just mean you can see the code. But these types of software code is usually not available. Now let's talk about the software updates. Okay, what is the purpose of software updates? Software updates make software compatible with the newer operating system. Software update fix bugs and security vulnerabilities. Software updates improve performance and efficiency. This is all about the purpose of software updates. Software updates are usually made available for download from a server on the internet. Some updates can be scheduled to happen automatically when they are available or when they are released. Before updating your computer, make a copy of your data. This is in case the update removes something important. That's it. We are done with the chapter 2. In the next class, we start the chapter 3, which is about the memory and processor. See you in the next class. Bye.